Praise God for another the other day in His house, right? Amen. I don't know who you are tonight, but I feel the Lord touching my heart tonight. After I read this article and this scripture about God's grace, it's just something that's been pulling on me. It's like, Jamie, you need to tell my people that's going through a hard time that it is a better day than what you're going through today. That he has made a righteous place for you to go, not of the world, but of him. He is going to build many mansions for us here today. But first, we must trust and believe, amen. We must just look in our heart and research our heart tonight and say, Lord, I've been trying to do things on my own. I can't get things right. Everything I do, it falls down. And Lord, I've tried to do this. I've tried to do that. I feel like a failure. How many times have y'all had the devil this week to tell you that you were a failure because of your past? I want you to know here tonight that nobody in here is a failure. That God loves every soul in this church. Amen. That God wants his people to know that don't look down on yourself. Don't let the devil tell you you're worthless. But stand up and believe in God and let him grow your life. Amen. Let him teach you how to live. And let him be your solid rock that you stand on. Let him be your cornerstone here tonight. You know, when I first got clean, I did. I felt like a failure. I felt like nobody I felt like I destroyed my life and I didn't have nothing else to look for. I felt helpless, lonely, and I found out that Jesus loved me the way that I was. And that Jesus was just teaching and growing me and he was allowing obstacles to come in my life because he knew that it was going to take that obstacle to bring me to where I'm at today. I look back at my addiction, and I talked to my wife about this about two weeks ago. I said, you know, if I'd have sit back then and believed what you told me about God is molding me and shaping me and correcting me and growing me, I would have told you back in that day that my wife was lying and that God could never fix or have anything to do with somebody like me. Right. But I found out one night. I found out how much Christ loved me because when I cried out to me to him, he heard me. Amen. Right then and right then, but he heard me. I didn't have to beg for his mercy. I didn't have to do anything but just ask him to come in my heart and repent of my life that I was living. And he took me in and he has been rocking me and encouraging me and holding me and, and just giving me a life that I thought that I could never have. You know, I used to want a lot of things in life. I used to dream about a lot of things, and I wish I had what this guy had. I wish I had what this woman had. I wish I had what my next-door neighbor had. And I found out today how to be content with what God has given me. Amen. And that's a new life, a new creation. It's a new start. It's a new change in my life. Amen. But you still may be here tonight and say, Jamie, you don't understand what I've done in my past. If you knew what I did, you would probably run away from me or hide from me or didn't want me to come in this church. But I want you to know, I don't care what you did in your past, that it's not my uh, job to judge you. But I'm going to let you come in in God's house and I'm going to let God clean your life up. Amen. I don't have anything to do with your life, amen? <laughs> and it's none of my business what you did in your past. God knows and you know. And as long as you take today and make things right from yesterday and move forward, that's all I care about. I want everybody here today to be happy. You know, the world has a hard time believing in addicts and alcoholics. Amen? Amen. The world puts poster boards on our back and labels us and don't even know us. But you know who does know us? God. God knows everything about you. Amen? We were made from the image of God. And if God could create this world and put all this together and this beauty in this world and make these bodies, don't you know God can change your future? Amen. Don't you know that he can change your life here? And I want to read this tonight. This is a wonderful uh, piece right here, but it's, it says God's grace for addicts. And I want you all to really pay attention to this because you need to look at yourself today as a new person in Christ. If you have asked Jesus Christ to come in your heart, then God's grace is for you, amen? God has spared your life from that place called hell because if we had anything to do with it, 
our destination would be hell without God's grace. And I thank God for his grace. And I also have the faith in Jesus Christ that went to the cross and died at Calvary for my sins and your sins. But let's read this. This goes on. Y'all remember the song Amazing Grace? Well, this author of this right here, he puts a little piece of that song into his uh, summary right here. It says, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. If you are struggling with drug addiction and alcoholism, chances are these words sound pretty unbelievable right now. Amen? Yeah. You may be sitting there saying, well, man, I've never, ever could feel happy like the author is singing this song. But you can tonight. You can let go and let God step in your life. Let God take charge of your life here tonight. Let his will be done in your life and you stop fighting and quit holding on to your old life and give God what you have left to give him. And God will take what you have left to give him and make something beautiful out of it. But you just have to trust in him to let go and let God. Amen. Amen. Are you feeling like a wretch, lost, blind, and stumbling down the wrong path? Are you feeling like you are undeserving of God's grace and love right now? If so, you might think that you have no hope to get to the point that the author is coming to. It says right here, author of this beloved hymn is talking about fortunately for you. It's got right here, thank God that he has given you his grace. Do y'all realize today that all of us has made it to another Tuesday night meeting? Yes. We're all walking and talking tonight, and I hope everybody is excited and happy and you're enjoying your day. But if you're not, stop and start your day over and give it to God. Amen. Yes. Let him fight your battles. Let him change your personality. Let him change your eyes. Let him change your mouth. Amen. Sometimes we still got a sword, and when we open his mouth, that sword comes out, and it cuts hard. And once we open his mouth and let that sword come out, it's hard to take those things back. People forgive. People forget. But it's always in the subconscious of a human being's mind. They never forget what you said to them. They might act like they forgot it, but they still think about it. But God never, he, he, he does not, once you commit your sins to him and repent and give him your old ways and ask for forgiveness, he remembers no more. Amen. See, God's a big difference than us humans on earth. We don't never forget and we always want to get even and we never forgive and, and we can never set our, our emotions right. But God is the mighty forgiver. We got a God that's awesome, amen. amen. Our God forgives all and don't see it no more. You just buried in the ground and it's gone. Jesus has took the place of all those sins. And I want you to know here tonight that I'm not condoning for somebody to go out here and slip and fall and trip and hurt yourself a thousand times a week and use that grace card. Amen. Right. But what I'm saying is we should be obedient to the Lord because of his grace that we should live a changed life. It says that we have been made a new creature, a new creation so if we have been made a new creation, then we are not the same person that we used to be in our drug addiction, right? Amen. That God has changed us. He has changed our ways, changed our personality, changed his mouth, and changed the way you walk. He has even changed your attitude here today, where it leads to be. But, you know, you might sit here today and say, God, you know, I'm too mean for God, or God just don't love me because, because, because. But he does love you. I'm telling you, he loves you. Grace is God's undeserved love, and God wants you to have it. Grace is your heavenly Father looking at you, and instead of sin, your shortcomings. Amen? Don't that bless somebody here tonight that God is not looking at your past, but he is seeing you as loving you? Amen? Amen. See, our past is gone. If we would just ask for forgiveness, our past is gone. We don't need to look at the past no more and worry about We don't have to worry about if humans like the, likes us or not. only thing we need to worry about is God, that we're pleasing God in a way that we should be. That's the only thing that matters. You know, we, we, we went through the drug addiction, and yes, we burnt some bridges, and yes, it's some people that we can't even make amends to, and they might not even be safe to make amends. But I'm telling you this today, all that, just leave it alone. 
Just leave it alone and worry about what God can do with your life today. God showed us his ultimate display of undeserved love when Jesus gave his life at the cross and paid for all of our wrongs, even though he certainly didn't deserve the punishment that he got. Did y'all know that Jesus Christ went to that cross and he took our place? Not only did he take our place, but he took that punishment that we deserved. And he took on the sins of the whole world. Now you have to remember, Jesus, who had no sins, but he took a, a sins of the whole world so that he could be the sacrifice for you and me. That's wonderful, ain't it? Amen. That sounds bad for him, but if we think about it tonight, think about God's grace. Think about how much you're loved here tonight. I want everybody to leave here with a different mind of what love means. It's got right here, why do we need God's grace? Sometimes we may wonder, well, why do I need God's grace? Why do I need to even follow God's way? I want to tell you this, it will come a time where every knee will bow. It's going to come a time when Jesus comes back that people are going to realize right off the bat, Oh, my goodness, it's too late. What do I do? Do I run and hide? Do I try to stand in the back of the line and try to get my life right before it gets to me? I want you to understand that we can fix all that today. That we can go to sleep at night and be proud and, and be anxious and be waiting for the Lord for his second coming. I thank God today that he has made a new creature out of me. I thank God today that he has brought my family back together that he has given a, a beautiful, loving church here, that I can preach up here and feel the work of God, feel the Holy Spirit move, not only in this room, but through people's lives. I'll see people that's come in broken, disgusted, wanting to die, wanting to give up. I can't tell you the times that I've talked to people in that back room back there, and I've gave them the illustration is, well, you know, God, God's not going to let you down but you've got to keep on fighting because God is trying to make you into somebody that you can't see right now. Right. Yeah. And I'm telling you that again. I believe in what God can do because he's done it in my life. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that I won't always like I was when I preach up here. That I was a totally different person. You wouldn't have even known me in my day. But God has done a mighty work in my life. He has changed my life and I give him all the glory Amen. for that. That God can do that kind of work. I think about that undeserving love. I think about my life. You mean to tell me that God loves this? After what this done to him and the world, and I chose the world over my God. I chose the drug over my God and made the drug my God. And you mean to tell me that God can love a wretch like me? Who are you kidding? But I found out the hard way that God loves me and what I mean by the hard way is, and I thank God that it worked out this way. A lot of my mama used to get on me sometimes. She says, you don't need to be telling a lot of people that you was an addict. They just need to see you for who you are today. I said, mama, I can't do that because I'm living for God now and, and I've got to use my testimony. Somebody might hear my testimony and change their life and call on God. Amen. I'm real passionate about that, and anybody that knows me, when I go meet other preachers in different towns and different churches and stuff, oh, they know that I'm a recovering addict because I'm not ashamed of it. I want people to know what God has done in my life. Amen? I want people to see that God is good. Not that I'm bragging on what He's done in my life, but you can sit out there and you can shout victory and glory over what He has done in your life tonight. That's what I wanted to focus on tonight, the mighty love, the grace of God, Amen. that we're here because of God, that it's no coincidence that he's got a mighty plan for it. I don't care who you are in here and what you've done. You might have pending charges on you from your past addiction, but don't worry about that. God is not done. God is working on the court system now as we speak. God is making things happen as we speak. God is working on your family back home as we speak. He's working on your marriage, your kids. He's working on the whole thing that the devil tried to destroy. Amen? Yeah. 
But we have to realize today, why was God's grace important? Why? Because we are all sinners. We fall short of the glory of God. We had to have a sacrifice to take our place of sin, and that uh, sacrifice was Jesus Christ. And you think about that story of uh, Abraham, how he must have thought for a second when God says, Abraham, I need you to show me how much you love me. I need you to kill your son and sacrifice your son on the altar. But then if you think about it and question that, didn't God sacrifice his son for our sin? Didn't God give his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and I, to go to the cross, to walk that street, to get beat, get whipped, to get mocked, get persecuted, and take a on the whole responsibility and the sins of the world. He did that because he loves me and you. So what I'm telling you tonight, please don't focus on your past. Don't let nobody in this world tell you you ain't going to make it. If you got people telling you because you was an addict that you ain't going to make it, you need to find new friends. You need to go somewhere else. And I will tell you this, what I've learned in life. There's a lot of rich people. There's a lot of people in this world that don't have salvation. And they might look at us like we're nobody because we got strung out on drugs. But I'm telling you this. Anybody can be a child of God and it don't cost you nothing. Amen. amen. It costs amen. Jesus Christ the price. Yeah. That's who paid your price here today. Don't you like it when you go out to dinner or you go somewhere and somebody says, it's on me. I just want to do something out of good deed. You and your family eat and I'm paying for it. Don't it make you feel good yeah. when somebody yeah. does something for you? Amen. Well, it should make you feel good that Jesus... Freely that gave you salvation in your life, praise Amen. God. Amen. Addiction has dragged you down. You probably feel especially unworthy of God's love at this moment. We need God's grace to forgive our sins, to help us get up in the morning, and to preserve through our daily struggle. Amen. For the drug user, grace means you survived another day and are given the opportunity to put your life back in action. Amen. 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 You have been given another day. Amen. We're living, breathing, and walking, and we're here to meet, and God has given you another day to get your life straight. Amen. Don't keep wasting those days because tomorrow is not promised for nobody in here. We can die with sickness. We can get hit by a car, or anything can happen in the next 30 seconds. We need to take life serious. We need to start loving life. But first, we need to love ourselves. And we need to love the one who saved us. And that's Jesus Christ. How God shows his grace. God shows his grace in many different ways. But the number one way is by forgiving our sins. We daily commit, continue offenses against God. So many that we don't even know. Do y'all know we can commit a sin and not even know we committed it? See, the more sins you commit and the more you live in sin, you turn into a sinful person every day. Sin rampants in your life. And it gets to the point where you do stuff and you don't even know what you're doing because you have let sin take hold of your life. You have let Satan tell you another lie that is okay to justify in your way of thinking and your way of doing you find that it's too late when you find out the truth because you have a, had a consequence to pop up in your life. But you know, we all can start over, can't we? We all can repent. We can all turn away. That's exactly what the word repent means. It means to turn away, to move from, to get away from. Don't look back and just go on about your life without that part of it, right? And still, he forgives each and every one of our sins. Another way God shows his grace is about uh, allowing us to enjoy the good things in life. Family, loved ones, shelter, food, and beauty of nature are all things we take for granted, right? I take a lot of things for granted. You know, sometimes I take a vacation and I'll be on the beach or I'll be at the mountains or I'll be somewhere looking at God's beauty. And the only reason I'm looking at God's beauty is because I have slowed down Amen. On vacation long enough to stop and see the presence of God. Yes. But why am I looking at the presence of God during my daily activities? Is it that I'm too busy or I got more things more important than God's presence or his, his righteous things that he has made for us and his grace? I think sometimes we get lazy. Amen. 
We get lazy and we assume that God just going to know what we do and we go back and get on track the next day and start over. Well, God does, but He don't know it. Let me tell you something. If you keep living in sin, one or two things are going to happen. God's going to take you home or He's going to put you down on the ground in what I call the woodshed. Amen. He's going to put you in a place where you have to call on Him. Amen. Amen. And it ain't a good place. I can tell you I've been there and I know you've been there too. You know what I'm talking about. Has it been jail? Has it been loss of license? Has it been losing your home? Has it been losing your family? Has it been this, that? You can name anything in the blank. But I'm not saying that our God's a mean God, but our God's a just God. Amen? Our God is a righteous God. He's the oneness of us. Amen? He is the awesome God that loves us and gave His Son up for you and I. Surely we should give Him some back and that's obedience. That's giving Him back a righteous life. To live the best as we can. To do what we can. You know, I've had enough of the world. I don't want no more of the world. I've lived my share of the world and done what Jamie wanted to do. It's time I buckle down there and see what I can do for God. And let God's work be done in my life. I want to tell you, I don't make a lot of money. Me and my wife are more content now than I did when I made good money. I wouldn't give my life up now for nothing in the world. And I'm telling you, somebody can come tell me today, if you walk away from this pulpit, I give you $100,000 a year. You have your own car, your own truck. And you know what Jamie was saying? I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I would say, you take that job. I don't want it. I got all I need. Amen. See, see when we get an attitude and a, and a um, commitment like that in our heart for Christ that that we stop wanting what we uh, drool over and stop wanting what we desire, but we take what God puts in our hands, God will work in your life and you'll never starve, you'll never go without, and God will always have what you need as long as you're in God's will. Yes. And I'm a living testimony of that. Some, some months go by, I don't know how me and my wife make it, but me and my wife live good. And the point of it is I'm not ashamed by not making billions of dollars a year. I'm just telling you how good it works. God works in our household. It's some months where it's like money is being put in the bank. It's like somebody secretly putting money in there. And I get boggled some months when I go to the bank and I look at the statement. And I'm not trying to sit here and tell you that I got everything I need. I'm just telling you what God has given me on a daily basis. Amen. And I don't credit those things to a mistake. I don't credit it to coincidence or that's luck. No, it's of God because I am working for God. I have trusted in God. And God is showing me His love. Amen. You might be here today and say, Jamie, how did I get to that point? How do I get where you are? What do I do? Only thing I can tell you tonight is trust in God. Give God your heart. Not only your life, but your heart. And you make Him Lord of your life. And what does it mean to make Him Lord of your life? It means to sacrifice everything in this world and just give your life to Him. Let Him be number one in your life, nothing else. And I promise you, when you do that, He will make things in your life better than you ever had. I want to stop right there with a little prayer. And no, I'm not done. I've got two sheets left to read next week. So what I'm doing is tonight, I'm going to stop. and going to give you something to think about God's grace. And it's going to give you something to look forward next week on how much God can do for you. Amen. Amen. And why he's done it and the whole point and reason that he's done it. Amen. But the whole point of this tonight was believe in yourself. Believe in God. And God will direct your ways. He will coach you when you can't walk. Y'all seen that little sign that's been around for years and years? The footprints in the sand is only, is only one set. And it says Jesus was carrying. Well, Jesus may be carrying somebody tonight because you don't know how you're walking. That's how he works. Sometimes when I get pain or I get busy in life and we're, we're doing the ministry, me and my wife looked at each other one day. It was either, no, it was, it was the time we went down to Scotland that it was so hot. All of us was tired. We were soaking wet. And we looked like we were beat. And my wife said, I don't know how we're doing it. I don't know. I said, I know how. God's wow. given us an extra measure of grace to get this work done that he wants done. Yeah, right. He's got us down here for a reason. And we should never neglect what God can use us for and do. Just because you were on drugs last year at this time or last month, don't sit there and think that God can't use you because you were on drugs and alcohol. It's amazing a testimony 
that God gives you. Every time that you have messed up, you use that as a testimony of how God has lifted you back up and just raise your hands to him and give him all the glory and praises of your life. Amen. Let's go to the Lord. Dear Father God, Lord, we just thank you and praise you here tonight. And Lord, I pray that just reading uh, a, a section of just how much you love them will help somebody's heart just overflow here tonight. That their cup will just run it over. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would just guide people and get them on fire for the word and just read that word and get to understanding your mighty love and your grace. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity every day that I wake up to be able to stand behind this pulpit and to be able to share your word. Lord, I look at it like it's the best thing of my life, and I, I can't wait to the time that I'm preaching, Lord. So thank you for giving me the lungs, for giving me the health and the body to be able to stand here, Lord. But thank you for allowing addiction. Thank you for allowing things in my life to wake me up, to bring me to where I'm at today. And, Lord, I ask that you continue to keep that thorn in my side so that I can always be humble, that I never get conceited, that I always will never boast, but I will just stay where you got me today and enjoy your mighty grace and your love and, and mercy. Lord, we thank you tonight. We thank you for every soul you have sent in here tonight. And, Lord, we ask that you will bless them and their families back home or here in Henderson. We ask that you bless the ARC house, uh, Lifeline, the women's house. We ask you to bless every soul's house tonight and that you will bind any evil thing that's trying to come in their life and destruct them and put a wall up between you and them, Lord. We pray that you will break them walls down before we ever leave tonight. But we also pray that you will go before us and build a righteous road for us to walk down. And Lord, we thank you and praise you, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 Thank you all for coming. Amen. Oh, if you knew, we have a, if you're here tonight and you knew, we have a, 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 men, a, a women's group here for addiction. We have Paul and Kathy's doing a family group meeting here to help you understand the family side of it. So I say if you're a family member tonight, take advantage of this door right here. The women that's on addiction, take advantage of that door. <laughs>